Hi, I'm Willie. Welcome to my channel. Thank you for being here. If this is your first time here, please go down and click subscribe. If you're a return viewer or subscriber, thank you very much. I do appreciate each and every one of you. If you need IT consulting, go to williehow.com, fill out that contact form, and someone will be in touch with you as soon as possible. What we're going to talk about today is something that if you've worked with me, um, designing your Wi-Fi, fixing your Wi-Fi, uh, we've talked about, we also kind of skimmed over it in another video, but I get this question all the time coming up more and more. And what is DFS when we are talking about wireless, not talking about like distributed file system with windows. We're talking about what is DFS with wireless. So, uh, let's hop on over to the computer. I'm going to make some notes on the, uh, on the, the dry erase board and, uh, we'll talk a little bit about this. So, all right, so uh, what what is DFS? And I know that my handwriting is so awesome that you're not going to be able to stand this. But uh, what DFS stands for with wireless is dynamic frequency selection. And most of the time when we're talking about it, we'll just talk about radar, right? So in the five gigahertz band where your Wi-Fi runs, that's a shared that's a shared part of the spectrum. And it's shared with things that take priority over us sending cat memes in our house, right? And so the things that take priority in that five gigahertz in those those channels is gonna be radar, whether it's weather radar, military radar, airport radar, and there could be other applications running in the five gigahertz range that are gonna take priority. And so if you take a look at one of your APs um, and that manufacturer has been approved by the FCC to run their devices, to have their devices run in uh, that DFS space, some of the channels that you may see um, are gonna be, I got a list here, uh, like uh, 52, 56, 60, uh, 64, and so on. And it goes, it ends, I think, at like 144. So there's a whole list of these DFS channels. And we try to avoid them if possible, just to avoid any kind of problems, right? So um, we typically, if you watch the, the design video that I did, there's usually enough channels for most of the installations that we deal with uh, that we don't have to use DFS channels that we can design around that. Uh, so what happens or how does DFS work with your APs? What happens is if you have a DFS channel selected on an AP, the AP will wait 60 seconds um, to see if it can talk on the channel. And this is called the availability check. All right. If there's no radar detected on the channel, then we can proceed to use that channel. Now, depending on um, the region, and this is something that I didn't know until recently, depending on the region, the channel may actually have up to a 10 minute um, availability check before you can use it. So if you're using those DFS channels, depending on where you're at, um, it may be longer than 60 seconds. It could be up to 10 minutes. So if you turn your access point on, you're in one of those regions, you're using a DFS channel, and you're not, you know, you're not able to to use uh, the AP on that five, the five gigahertz frequency. It's probably because it's still in that uh, availability check. So once you're operating on a DFS channel, what's going to happen is the AP is going to actually monitor the the frequency, and if it does detect radar, it's going to stop transmitting. And what it's going to do is, depending on how your AP is set up, it may shift you to another channel um, and then kind of start the process over again. Now, the thing is, if, um, if this happens, 
it's also up to the client to be able to support shifting to another frequency. Sometimes clients aren't, uh, aren't able to use the same DFS channels that your APs use, right? So now we get into a whole other set of issues with this. Um, what, what will happen is in the US and in the UK, when, when that happens, the AP has 10 seconds to move channels. And once that happens, technically it should let the stations know. Different manufacturers are gonna implement this probably differently. So your mileage may vary on this, but uh, the access point has 10 seconds to change channel, update the stations. Maybe the station doesn't support the new DFS channel. So now you're gonna have degraded um, you know, communications with the AP. There's a lot that kind of goes into this. So you can see why we, we tend to not, um, on installations where we don't have to use DFS, we, we don't. Um, once that radar is detected and we have stopped, we will not use that channel for 30 minutes. We will not use that channel for 30 minutes on the AP. Um, and that is called the non-occupied period. So how can you avoid these problems with DFS? Well, you can simply design around DFS. And, um, you know, if, if you use channels that are not DFS and you have proper uh, power configuration, then you really shouldn't have to worry about this too much. If you get into applications where you're going to be having to use DFS, then that changes the scope of your setup, your installation. And in that case, um, we may not be able to help you, but we can definitely get you with a vendor who understands how to put the pieces of that puzzle together so that your Wi-Fi network, and we're talking like, you know, probably like high density uh, installations and things like that, where you're going to have a lot of access points really close together and you may have to use those DFS channels. So um, also false positives do exist. False positives can be caused by bad software, bad drivers from a wireless um for a wireless device and things like that. So if you see a DFS hit on your access point, it doesn't mean that the radar is real. It, you should definitely check it out and see what's going on, but it could be a false positive. Check with your manufacturer, check with, you know, to see if on the current version of firmware, if there's known false positives and things like that, just kind of do some reading and see. Now, obviously, if you're close to a weather, a Doppler uh, weather setup, if you're close to an airport, if you're close to a military base, probably the DFS hits are probably not false positive. So you'll have to figure that out. The easiest thing to do is just not use the DFS channels. And remember in the United States, the FCC does provide that DFS certification for manufacturers. So I think I covered, you know, what DF DFS is. Um, most of the time we don't use it. If you do need to use it, it's a, you know, somebody's going to use special tools, come in, do a full analysis, do a full design. Um, and the thing is also remember when you are doing that, even if you bring some tools in to do some, some, uh, monitoring of the frequencies, maybe those tools won't pick it up. It depends how close you are, how frequently it's happening and things like that. So if you are getting those DFS hits, you're going to have to look into it, make sure it's not a false positive check your surroundings, you know, because remember too, that RF can travel, um, it can travel pretty far, you know, so you could be getting real hits, but I think I covered everything. If you've got any questions about DFS, if you've got any questions about DFS after this, if I confuse you even more, whatever, leave your comments and questions, um, down in the comments. I will answer those as soon as I can. So if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe, please comment, and share, please follow me on Twitter and Instagram. And if you need IT consulting, go to willyhow.com, fill out that contact form. Someone will be in touch with you as soon as possible. If you'd like to support the channel by using our affiliate links, they are all down below. They don't use, uh, they don't uh, change your price, but they do kick a couple bucks over to the channel. Once again, I'm Willie. I want to thank you for being here. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.